Hey everyone, welcome to the show. My name is Sam Shaw and I'm the founder of Wall Street Mastermind. This is Wall Street Mastermind's Elevate program where we take our flagship coaching program and give it away for free to high potential students who are currently in a difficult financial situation. The goal of this show is to first and foremost give these students the coaching and guidance that they wouldn't be able to get otherwise and help them break into investment banking. Of course, we also want to give all of you an in-depth look at how to go about your own investment banking preparation process the right way so that you can model it after the same proven methodology and strategies that we've used to place over 90% of our students into investment banking across every single bulk bracket and elite boutique bank over the last several years. With hundreds of thousands of applicants competing to break into investment banking globally each year, our team only has the bandwidth to help a very small percentage of you. So my hope is that this show helps all of you, even if you aren't able to directly participate in our program and work with us. So let's get to it. In this session, we debrief on Shimena's interview with Deutsche Bank, which she was unfortunately rejected from. We go over some of the answers she used during the interview and figure out what could have been improved. For most students, rejections will happen at some point along the way to securing an investment banking offer. What's important is not being perfect, but learning from each setback so that you can be even better when the next opportunity comes along. Hey, Shimona. Hey, Sam. How are you doing? I'm okay. How are you? Doing all right. So, saw your message. So, it sounds like the, 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 DB, the DB one didn't work out. No, I didn't. Did you... They just email you or were you? They called me. They called you? Okay. Were you able to get any feedback? No. She she was very rushed and very straightforward to it. So I don't know. She was quite, I don't know, but it's okay. I don't know. I tried to just say thank you. She said like we, we, it was very competitive, just kind of the whole, it was very competitive. We're really sorry to like, you won't, we won't be going further with you. And then I said, okay. And then she said, have a good day and then hung up. Um, yeah, it was very fast. I don't know. It's the first like formal one because the other one was just kind of up in the air and never happened. So that was the first one. Um, you had two interviews, right? For the Super Day? So they were back to back. I had, it was 30 minutes and then it was a 30 minute break of just no call. And then it was, and the last one was, it was four. And then the next one was at, um, five. So... (laughs) <laughs> anytime anytime like you know you go through an interview if it doesn't work out then i mean obviously first of all that's unfortunate but also to be completely honest um in my experience it's also normal like for most people they have to like go through a few interviews and get rejected first before they get their first offer i mean sometimes like people just you know go into their first interview and just crush it and then they're done or whatever but like i would say that's typically not the norm, right? And so this is all, first of all, par for the course, I would say. But I think what's important is trying to figure out like how we can improve from this, right? Because you're going to have more opportunities. You're going to have more interviews coming up. Um, and what's important is that we make sure, you know, whatever got you ding this time, we don't make the same mistakes the next time, right? So... In terms of the two interviews that you had, like if we think back on, cause uh, and I asked like, if you were able to get any feedback, to be honest, like most of the time they're not gonna give you feedback, right? Um, usually the only way you are able to get feedback is, and by the way, you should try doing this, which is, um, I know you probably sent like um, thank you emails to both of your interviewers, right? I would like email them again and ask them for feedback over email um, and just, like, I mean, you can let them know that you heard back from HR today and you know that you didn't get it. Uh, and while you're disappointed, you're still really, uh, you know, still really grateful for the opportunity to have um, interviewed for the program. Um, and then like ask them like, you know, if they would be willing to give you some candid feedback so that you can kind of work on those things going forward for all of your future interviews. And they still might not give you feedback, but once in a while they will. Um, and so like never hurts to ask, right? So I would do that. I would just do that in general with like all the interviews that you have if you don't end up getting the offer. Um, but aside from that though, we just assume that we're not gonna get any feedback. Like 
What, if you think back on the two interviews, I, do you have it, any guesses as to maybe like, I don't know, certain questions that you messed up on or? Yeah, I re I've done nothing more than rethink like every part of my interview, I think since then. Mm -hmm. um, just to specifically, yeah, do that, take it apart. I think, I mean, I know for the first one, it was going really, really well. We really bonded because I talked about to her about like my athletics. She started telling me about her ballet and like it was going really, really, really well. Um, but I know, like, I don't know, I don't think it had anything to do with it just because we talked about it too. Just at the end, I did say, oh, I had a, a recent interview with JP Morgan. Is there any way that I could know, um, what, by when I would know the results for this? So I didn't say like, this is the bank I would choose. I don't know if that's any way possibly, but then there was a 30 minute break. And then when the next interviewer came, so he went straight into my resume, um, did the same kind of general he just we, we really spent most of the time just talking about my resume he asked me why investment banking but then he said okay and then why Deutsche Bank and then I started telling him like going through my three reasons and everything but then I don't know he went really really hard at that question which I mess messaged you after like I just felt very uneasy about that question because I don't know if maybe they had time to talk about it. I don't know but I just felt very like I started going through like everything that I had read on the sites they're like focused on sustainability everything and then I talked to him about directly like people I had talked to like this person talked to me about this deal of new luminar technologies and her involvement and everything and then he was like yeah but this is all of the banks all of the big banks do the same thing so why us and then that's why I kind of felt like I was repeating myself I was like well they're focused on sustainability and all of these other things and then um at the end he was like mm, okay so I just really felt off from that moment. And then he said, do you have any questions for me? He answered those really well. And then he said, well, we'll get back to you very soon. Um, it was good talking to you. So that was the one that I felt the worst of. I just kind of after that, I don't know. I just, I felt off. Something just felt off. I think you're muted, Sam. Was that the entire interview? That was the second interview. Yeah. So the entire second interview was just about why Deutsche Bank? No. So the, so the, so the beginning of it was like, what's going through my resume. We spent quite a long, long time on that. Cause he was like, so why did you choose your school? Um, why, wh what, how is this club going? Is this club inside or outside of school? And then it was why investment banking. And then it was like, I would say about like 15 minutes on why Deutsche Bank, if not a little bit less, but it was just very specific to that. Um, and it was more so like, it turned into like an embarrassment it kind of turned embarrassing just because I felt like I was repeating it and it just felt like I was unprepared maybe even more for that question and it, it just turned really embarrassing yeah so um honestly I think that probably was what happened then, or that probably is the reason based on what you're describing um if the way he responded to your question at the end was like mm, okay that's like that's the tell right there is like, he's not convinced, right? And then immediately after that, he's like, what questions do you have for me? That's what I do when uh, I'm like, all right, there's no point asking her any more questions because I've made up my mind, right? So now it's just like, I'll give you the courtesy of asking me questions, right? Mm -hmm. So whether that had to do with the fact that you told the first interviewer about JP Morgan or not, um, it could be because they had 30 minutes in between that where they could have communicated and it's possible that the first interviewer said, Hey, I really like this girl, but I think she might get an offer from JP Morgan too. Can you like dig in on whether she would actually take our offer or not, which caused the second person to, you know, go a bit harder on that. Um, or maybe it had nothing to do with it, but like, it, it could also just be that, um, I mean, look, like why our bank is, this is why like, we, we call it like one of the guaranteed questions, right? So it's like, tell me about yourself, why our bank and why investment banking? Those are the three questions where uh, you have to have really, really good answers for them. I don't think typically most, you're probably, you're probably scarred from this experience, but I don't think typically most bankers will like spend 15 minutes drilling you on why this bank. But in this case, you either just ran into kind of a hard ass or or, or it was because of what you said about the JP Morgan thing. Honestly, like, so here's, this is a lesson too, right? Like, cause I know I told you to 
tell JP Morgan about your DB interview, right? But I think like, when we talk about this in the modules too, but I don't know if you remember, but when you're telling these firms about who else you're interviewing with, you wanna be very selective about who you tell them about, right? Like telling JP Morgan about DB is okay because I think most people would pick JP Morgan over DB and JP Morgan, I don't think they, I, I don't think they'll be necessarily threatened by the fact that you're interviewing with DB and also um, DB is still like a good enough of a bank, like it's still a both back a bank where like JP Morgan will care. So it's, 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 that, it's that fine line of like, is it close enough to the firm such that they'll actually give a crap that you have an interview with them? Because if you like say some middle market bank or some, you know, bank that no one's heard of, JP Morgan's like, yeah, we don't care, right? But also it can't be a bank that's like, where the firm feels like, ooh, like if we give them an offer and this other bank also gives them an offer, they're most likely not gonna take our offer, right? Which I think could have been the case from DB standpoint, because they're probably thinking like, oh, like, like if the first interview was like, oh yeah, she's great. Like, but if she's this awesome, like she's probably gonna get an offer from JP Morgan too. And so like, is she even gonna take our offer? Like the firm don't want to give offers to people that are not gonna take their offer. Because I don't know, it's like the, maybe it's a statistics thing. Like they want their acceptance rate to look high or I don't know if it's like an ego thing. I have no idea, but they just don't. Yeah. Right. So that's why I always tell you guys too, if you get questions about that, about like what other firms you're recruiting for, um, you want to be strategic about which ones you tell them about. You don't have to tell them about every single one. So tell them about it, something that's like, near the same level as them but slightly worse yeah yeah like, like, like yeah. That's, that's the ideal thing to do and then um and then like you know also like if, if you if you were gonna tell her about the JP Morgan thing then you're right like you have to finish that off by saying like the reason why I'm asking about the timing is if I like DB is actually my top choice so if I like I would rather hear back from DB before I hear back from JP Morgan, right? Yeah. Because then they're like, oh, okay. Like she really wants to be here, right? Um, so yeah, <clears throat> anyway, I think that's like live and learn, but yeah. for future interviews, it could come up again um, where they ask you like, oh, so what other firms are you interviewing with? Yep. Right? Do you want to be careful about like what you say there? That makes sense. Yes. And also, like, even like in the most extreme case, sometimes they'll be like, "So if we give you an offer, like right now, would you take it?" And even if you wouldn't, the answer has to be yes. Okay. <laughs> and the answer has to be like convincingly yes. Like you cannot hesitate. You cannot be like, "Uh, yeah, right. yeah." It has to be like, don't even think about it. It's like, yeah, absolutely, I would take it. Like, where do I sign? Yeah. Okay. And they'll be like, okay. They're not gonna. They're not gonna have anything for you to sign at the time, right? But yeah. I was like, you just call their bluff and be like, yeah, where do I sign? I yeah. Now they will be like, okay, and they'll just like note it down. They'll go back and talk about it. Yeah. Right. <clears throat> right. Just, so it's like you gotta play these games, you know? Yeah. Yeah. Definitely lesson learned. Um. Yeah. So for example, something like that specifically, if they're like, so what other firms are you interviewing for, and why us? um is this just where like your research on that specific bank just really comes in because you have to make them basically kind of stick out of other banks now can you tell me what answer you gave them for ydb just pretend i'm interviewing you right now so like why do you want to work yeah. um okay so i said uh my reasons for wanting to be i think um just coming out of college i want to start in a bank that has a really great position. I think um, DB is a leading global bank, uh, leading global European bank. Um, and having that opportunity would be really incredible. I also would want to be around high caliber individuals. Um, and from my talking to um, an associate blank blank uh, XYZ, um, she had talked to me about um, how much um, how much, um, sorry, I just didn't think about it before, but I said, um, she had talked to me about how much support she had felt the moment that she went into Deutsche Bank as an, um, as an analyst. 
And then finally, it would be the impact of the deals that you're getting to work with. Um, Shia talked to me about a deal that she was able to work with as soon as she came in with Luminar Technologies. And at the time, um, the CEO was the youngest self-made billionaire that um, went over Kylie Jenner. So she was able to see her deal go all over the news and being able to take part of uh, deals that you know that are being so impactful um, is really um, motivating to me to work at a bank like Deutsche Bank. So um, what I started to feel there was I felt like I started to go a little bit into my why investment banking. And then I didn't know if I needed to specify, like go specifically into Europe because that's kind of where Deutsche Bank is different from a lot of these banks. No, but no, I don't know. You're not going to be working in Europe, so that's irrelevant, right? Okay. Not like you're working in a London office, so it doesn't really benefit you that they're strong in Europe, right? Yeah. I think when I listen to the answer that you just gave, um, you're right. Like as an interviewer, if I wanted to be tough on you, then I, I would have said exactly what he said, which is like, okay, but like every single answer you gave me is also applicable to every single other board back and bank, right? Um, if we break down your regions one by one, like the first reason was DB is a, you know, very reputable global European bank right um that is not unique at all right? that's just like so is credit suite so is barclays so is ups uh -huh. and then there's a bunch of american banks goldman sachs morgan stanley jp morgan yeah. america blah, blah 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 right and so that one is kind of like that's that's like a throwaway and that's like a throwaway answer right the second the second one um you know you said high caliber individuals um, and then you talked about how you spoke to this one was like slightly better because you actually like mentioned someone specifically at the firm that you spoke to and but then like where it fell short is you didn't go into enough specifics around why the people at the firm are high caliber right so like she, you just said, you know, uh, sh she said she's gotten really great mentorship from the time she joined the firm, which is like, I don't know, it's like very vague. It's very high. Mm -hmm. the, the, the only way, because the, the truth of the matter is, and actually I'm going to hold that thought, and then the third and final one was, what was the third and final one? It was... Um, the impact on the deals. Impact on the deals. Oh yeah, high impact deals, right? It was like, okay. This one, I think you got a bit more specific because you actually like, talked about the deal. Mm -hmm. but like in general the key to this is the rea the reality is all of these things are kind of the same right and, and that that's what makes this question difficult in terms of like making it really unique but the only way to really address that is by one like naming specific people you talk to ideally for like even each of the three reasons you give if you especially if you networked with multiple people and then also like when they when, when you give the when you back up the example with something they told you you have to get into the specifics so like if you say like so and so vp told me that the people here are really high caliber individuals like why are they high caliber individuals you know mm -hmm. the, and this really like this this goes all the way back to actually your networking conversations mm -hmm. right because when you're networking you're you're trying to part i mean yes you're trying to get the referral but the other thing you're trying to do during those conversations is you're trying to get these things out of them so that you have something to say for this question so if if she if she if you ask her like hey so and so like so what do you like the most about working at deutsche bank and then she's like oh she gives you some vague answer like oh Cause like everyone here is just like so smart as like high caliber individuals and she just leaves it at that. Then you need to ask a follow-up question. Cause you're like, Oh, interesting. Like, can you give me an example of that? Like when you say high caliber individuals, like what does that mean exactly? Right. Cause you need, you just think about it. Like what she just told me, is that something I'd be able to say in an interview and get by with it? If the answer is no, then I need to know more. Right. So like, can you give me an example? Can you give me a specific example? Like what do you, when you say high caliber individual, like what does that mean? It's like, Oh, well, you know, like our managing director is like, he's done like X, Y, Z amazing things. Like this is like, 
he's just like, like whatever, right? Like, because you, you don't know, you, you don't work there. You have to rely on them to tell you, right? Mm -hmm. But if you, the more specifics you can give about why a certain individual there is an example of a high caliber individual, well, like that person only works there. That person doesn't work at Credit Suisse or UBS or Barclays or all these other places, yeah. right? So it's just, it, it just comes down to like how specific you can get. It's, it's usually not going to be um, something really like mind-blowingly unique, right? Yeah, I remember I also, well, what I was trying to do, I was trying to like, I remember I also read up like their focus on like important things going on like sustainability and how they had just opened a whole new section um, for research and all of that on sustainability, like trying to show that I had done research, but I think that went the wrong way. Um, you don't want to do that. Okay. A lot of people, they like, that would be what I consider to be like, it's factual, but it's irrelevant. Okay. What I mean by irrelevant is like, when they ask you like, why you want to work for our bank? What they're really asking, what they're really asking is like, how does this benefit you? Like, okay. what's in it for you if you were at DB versus all these other banks? Saying like, oh, you guys have these like sustainability initiatives, blah, blah, blah. Yeah, yeah okay, great. That's great for the earth, but like, okay. why do you care, right? Um, it's just not like, and honestly, like I hate to say this, but most bankers are pretty cynical people. And so they're not gonna sit there and believe that you're choosing them just because they're doing a lot of charity or whatever, right? Yeah. Um, so I think that, um, <clears throat> I think like, yeah, shy away, not shy away, completely avoid answers like that where it's like, has nothing to do with you really, or it's like too, just too many degrees removed from what's in it for you. Um, and then like, Honestly, if, if you've given your reasons and they're specific and they're still giving you a hard time about it, or there's like, yeah, but like, what else? And you mm -hmm. just like, don't, like, instead of just kind of like grasping for straws or like, oh, well, then let me talk about this other thing I researched. Or let me talk about sustainability. Let me talk about this and that. Um, the way to like just put an end to it would just be like, Honestly, like, I'm not gonna lie, you're right. Like, there are a lot of great banks out there. And to be honest, all the banks are pretty similar, you know? And at the end of the day, I think for me, like, I could probably learn a ton working at any of these places. And so like, at that point, the only difference, when it, when it really comes, when, like when push comes to shove, the, really the only difference just comes down to the people. It just comes down to like, who do I feel like I'm going to get along with the most? And who do I feel like, uh, wh whose culture do I feel like I fit in, fit in with the best? Because if I'm going to spend 80, 90, 100 hours a week working at this job, you know, my coworkers are going to be the, the people that I'm going to see the most by far, right? I'm going to see them more than my family. I'm going to see them more than my friends. I'm going to see them more than my boyfriend. I'm going to see them more than everybody. And so like, if, if, if I don't feel like it's a place where I fit in and where I'm comfortable, then, then I, I think I'm just going to have a really miserable time. And so to be honest, like the biggest differentiating factor for me is just the people that I've spoken to so far. I can't really tell you why I feel like I am more comfortable with the people at DB, but it just is what it is. And like, you know, and you say that with conviction. I mean, what are they supposed to say to that? Like that you're, you're lying. They can't do that. Right if you really want to go all in you're like and so and so that's 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 a real reason but i think like you know why you're really asking me this question is because you want to know if i actually really want to work here and like i'll sign the offer right now if you if you give it to me today you know like you can't even say that it's just like like going back to what i said earlier is like you can just call their bluff like i'll sign your offer right now if you give it to me today mm. and then like because ultimately that's what they're testing for right like that's the crux of this question that it's not really like it's not really about whether they're um whether you have some fancy answer for why this band is like they're just trying to feel you out and see like do i believe that this person actually wants to come here mm -hmm.
it's not uh, so a lot of it's not just like what you say it's like how you say it. like if i'm you're staring them straight in the eyes and saying it with full conviction it's like what i'll sign your offer today like, yeah. like okay like yeah she's 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 she, she's telling the truth right that's the feeling you want to give them does that make yeah. sense that's really great to wash that out because that's definitely like I worked on what we were doing, but then I was like, okay, maybe I'll do some extra research. That's out. Good to know. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that makes total sense. Cause I mean, that's definitely, especially for something like this, where I was thinking about it too, it was over the phone, you know? So that's something that I think anyone can do. Like really also just like be reading a website on the phone. Um, so yeah. Okay. I think like if they want to be a, if they want to be a hard ass and give you a hard time, then you have to kind of like do like a pattern interrupt. You can't just like go along with it and play that game, right? Like, oh, well, let me give you another reason. Let me give you another reason. Like, yeah, yeah. Well, this, is, this applies to all banks. And I was just like, yeah, you're right. It applies to all banks. <laughs> like, you know, um, which is probably not what they're expecting, right? Yeah. That makes sense? Yeah, yeah, for sure. Okay. Uh, but look, honestly, like, if that's the reason why, then that's easily fixable. You know, the, 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 the worst is, it would be a lot worse if it was like, oh, I don't know, like, I feel like the entire interview went really well and I have no idea why I didn't get the job. Like, I hate it when that happens because then it's like, then I don't know how to help you. Yeah. yeah. Um, <clears throat> But for JP then, like, so you reached out to the MD and she just hasn't gotten back to you? She responded to me like 10 minutes before talking to you. She was like on a family emergency. So she hadn't been able to respond, which is just definitely one of those things where like impatience again, my week, like, it's just, I've learned it's so much about this process. You can't expect these people that are so busy to answer you right away. But I really, man. Um, so yeah, she just answered. I was going to say like, when you told me on Slack that the MD hasn't responded to you, I was like, mm, there's probably a good reason for it because if you think about it, it doesn't jive what you said before. The way you described her to me was like, she's like basically taking you under her wing and she really wants to help you. Yeah. You go from that to just like, oh, let me ghost this person, you know? So I, usually if, if someone like that doesn't respond to you, I would not give up. I'll give them a little bit of time, obviously, but then like, if I still don't hear back, my default assumption is not that, oh, they don't want to talk to me. It's that, oh, they just got jammed up or they're busy and they couldn't, yeah. respond, you know? Yeah. So what did yeah. you say then? Um, no, she said, if you don't hear back um, by the middle of the week, send them another email. Send HR? Yep. Okay. Okay. Um, yeah so i guess you'll just have to do that then i mean ideally i would have hoped that she would have said like she will look into it for you but yeah especially since she said she was involved but i think what you can do is follow up with hr again midweek like she asked you to do and if you still don't hear back then the next time you reach out to her i might just like I might just tell like, hey, so I did what you told me to do. I reached out midweek, still haven't heard back. Yeah. Is there any way you could ask someone for me? I don't know if that's possible or not. I mean, like ask it in like a nice and polite way, not like a demanding way, but Mm -hmm. I would just like, I was hoping she would just offer to do that already, but since she hasn't, then you have to do what she tells you to do, you know? Because I know, so I, I know one girl that got in, and um she was told that there's also like second rounds early february so what i was thinking and what well, we were both thinking was also it's possible i'm just really on the wait list and they're waiting for this final round and see how those candidate candidates are and then they'll send it um he knows there's second rounds in early february for sure there, yeah there's definitely for the diversity program yep okay that would explain it then i mean but but you told HR that you had this DB interview or you didn't? Yep. So you did tell them. Okay. All right. Yeah. It's possible. 
Uh, it's possible you're on the wait list uh, if, if there's another round. That actually was quite the, that would be quite the logical explanation. Mm -hmm. um, so if that's true, then, then we'll just have to wait and see. But like, if you are on the wait list, honestly, like, I feel like that's something that your MD should be able to find out for you pretty easily. And also, if you are on the wait list, that's where like, she could really go to bat for you, you know, if you want to, like, I don't know, like I had another client that was on the wait list for <clears throat> Morning Stanley Tech. And this was for junior summer internship, but he had an MD there that really liked him. And that MD was um, like, just keeping him updated on exactly what his status was and like, oh yeah, your wait list, uh, we have another interview on this day, whatever, whatever. And so he just kept following up with that guy. And then like, and he, eventually like he got off the wait list and he got the offer, but I'm sure that MD like, you know, probably do whatever he could to help him in, in, in the, behind the scenes, right? Like yeah. he can't, and your MD is not gonna be able to just be like, hey, let's not interview these other people in February and just give her the offer. Like, I'm not saying she could do that, but I'm saying like, once they had the, she could definitely find out where they're on the wait list, first of all, but second of all, if you are on the wait list and then like once they've had these interviews in February, assuming you're like close, you know, like you're on the cusp and you're like in contention for one of the spots, then I think like she she should be capable of giving you like that extra push over the other candidates, right? Now, if you're like, if you're like not on the cusp, like you're like way far down the list, yeah. then she might not be able to do anything for you, right? And so it just, it just depends. Um, <clears throat> right, yeah. Um, so yeah, there was that. So yeah, it was just kind of an exchange of like, am I super rushed to do it or should I wait for that February? Or is it possible, like, is that, is that a good idea? Because it seems like that's what they're doing. So it's like, is it kind of coming down to whether I can move forward before these interviews go? Or like, if I'm just going to be taken in consideration after, right? Yeah. <clears throat> I think one thing you could do maybe also is like, you could respond to the MD and say, got it, um, thanks for advice. So, and you can just tell her what you told me, which is like, I actually heard that uh, there was another round of um, interviews for a separate group of candidates in early February. So I was kind of thinking that maybe I'm waitlisted. Um, and then I would ask her like, one, do you know if, do you know if, the, uh, <clears throat> do you have any, do you have, uh, do you know if I am waitlisted, first of all? And then second of all, like, you know, if I am waitlisted, do you still think it's a good idea for me to check in with HR right now? Or should I wait until after the February interviews have happened to check in? Because I don't want to be annoying and I'm not trying to like force their, force an answer if they're just not ready to give me an answer. Um. Cause I, I think, I think if she, if she, it sounds like she wants to help you. And if you guys have like a close enough of a relationship then you can just be very honest with her in terms of like your thought process, right? Yeah, 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 yes, yes. And then, and then like, just see what she says. Cause then at that point, if you ask her that question then she's like, well, I actually don't know if you're waitlisted and then she can go and find out, you know? Um, or, or, or maybe she'll respond and if she can't find out for some reason, which I can't think of what that reason to be, would be, but even if she can't find out, then she'll respond and tell you what she thinks she should do. It's like, no, you should still follow up right now. Then in, in which case you should follow up where she's like, yeah. oh yeah, wait till February. Then it's like, okay, then wait till February, right? Yeah. The part that doesn't fit in the puzzle though, is that when I initially emailed HR, they said, we'll get back to you this week when it was like happy new year recruiters have been out they should be getting back to you this week so it's anybody's guess it could be that they were planning on getting back to candidates that week so like the, the, the friend that you know that got the offer she heard back that week right yeah. and then like 
maybe all the people that were yeses and noes did hear back that week. And then maybe you're one of the few people that are like the maybes and uh, mm-hmm. but they just a lot of times they don't think about it that much when they say things. They're just like, yeah. hey, we'll get back to you this week. And then there's these like corner cases where like, oh, except if you're waitlisted, then we won't get back to you until February. Like they just don't think to be that specific, right? Yeah. Or another possibility is like, they're just not thinking period. And it's just like, sometimes they say things that are just wrong. Okay. <laughs> you know, like, I, like I'm, not, I'm not hating on HR, but like, in my experience, some people in HR are like, uh, let's just say like they can be a bit disorganized at times. Like I've had multiple instances. I won't say which bank, but I've had multiple, and it's actually multiple banks I've done this. I have multiple instances where I had clients that had already gotten offers and sent in their signed offer letter and accepted the offer. And then like a couple of weeks later, they'll get an automated email from HR saying like, I don't know, like asking them to like respond to something which made it seem like they hadn't accepted the offer yet, or it made it seem like they were still interviewing. And then like my clients would freak out and be like, wait, 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 wait. like, do they, they think like I don't have an offer yet or do I actually not have the offer? And they're like freaking out. And I just tell them like, no, they probably just made a mistake. Just relax. And it's like, it's very nerve wracking for the student, but like, and then like, sure enough, I was like, just ask them. And then they're like, oh yeah, I'm yeah, sorry, we messed up. We sent the wrong email. <laughs> like, okay. Yep. And so yep. I feel like stuff like that does happen. So just don't assume that like everything they say is gospel, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think so. I've, I've It's like, especially for this JP one, I think, I think I told you everyone applied and then they canceled everyone's applications and they told everyone to reapply. Yeah, so... You know, they're human, so they're going to make mistakes. Yeah. Ideally, they wouldn't because, again, it's very it causes a lot of anxiety for the, for the students, but it is what it is, you know? Yeah. 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 Makes sense. Makes sense. Yeah. Anxiety. It's been a good process to work on. Like I said, it's just, it's just funny going through it. I just, yeah. Eventually, I'll get there to not, I don't know if I'll get there to not be so, like, nerve wrack but just definitely yeah it's okay if they don't respond right away yeah no i mean it's fine like just in the meantime i think like you know follow the bendy see what she suggests and then like whatever she suggests that just becomes your course of action or that becomes your game plan and then just like stick to that yeah and while you're doing that while you're waiting on like the next steps or whatever there is really nothing else you can do there that's gonna like move the needle anyway. And then so yep. I'm like just it's like shift your attention to other productive things that you could be doing, right? Yep. All the other diversity applications that are due, you know, right around this time we're coming up, like just keep applying to as many of those as you can. And yeah. you really just need one of them to work out. Yeah. There are so many. Yeah. Yep. Um well, are you froze, Sam? Oh, really? I can hear you. Can you hear me? Yep. Okay, cool. Um, okay, so what else? What else is on your mind? Um, just maybe. So, I mean, I think I guess this is a very obvious question, but just in general, whenever uh, you're going to interview with a bank and they ask you about a deal you've been following, you normally always want to make it specifically to that bank, right? Not necessarily. No. Like, if they don't specify that it has to be a deal that they worked on, then it doesn't have to be. Okay. Sometimes they will specify that, you know, what's one deal we've worked on that you, that you followed, in which case it has to be, right? So it's like, if you're only going to prep one deal to talk about, then I would say it's safer to just prep a deal that they worked on just in case, right? Um, but you can also prep multiple deals. You could be like, this is one deal that I know really, really well. Mm-hmm. And I want to use that in like all my interviews if I can. Then that's like your default go-to deal. And then like for each bank, you can prepare like a backup deal <clears throat> in case they uh, are more specific and they say it has to be our deal, right? Okay. But you 
don't use that unless you have to, right? So you can approach it either way, um, but the more important part is just like being able to speak to the deal in an intelligent manner, right? So like I'd rather speak to a deal that wasn't done by the bank and do a better job than like force myself to speak about a deal that was done by the bank, even though I don't know it that well. Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah, of course. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, for sure. Um, and then I guess obviously, so whenever they ask you, I think this is just very synonymous, but to make sure whenever they ask you, what is it that you can bring to blank, like to us specifically, that's like asking your strengths, right? Yeah, that's a strength question. That's a strength question. Okay. Okay. Sounds good. Yeah. No. Okay. Okay. We'll keep doing that. Yeah. No, I'm just applying, just writing a lot of these. Like you have to just write multiple essays or so. Like why specifically this event and so. So that's just mostly what I've been doing. <clears throat> and again, uh, I think it's just sorry. No, what were you gonna say? No, I think um it's just that and I just, I think I've just gone through the modules from such a long time ago where like I've started going again through all my behavioral modules and I'm just starting to find things that I had completely forgotten about. Um, so that's definitely helping to kind of start over from zero. Um, I kept telling myself like, no, I already went through all of it, but I'm starting to go through. I'm like, oh, wow. Yeah, that's, that's very true. Like, I don't know if I told you, well, I, I think you mentioned this, but like when I went to go meet this MD in New York, I dressed all in black and she really called that out. Um, she was like, you know, you look like you're going to funeral. Don't, don't ever go to an interview like that. You know, you look very put together, but don't, don't dress all in black. So just those like little things, um, are good to know. Shirts. Huh? You have white dress shirts? Yeah. Yeah, I do. Um, she just, yeah. Yeah. I mean, I would say white shirt is always the safest option. So just, you know, as much as possible, I would just stick with that. Yeah. Yeah. But uh, yeah, I mean, going to the module a second time, like because you start early, if you have time to go through things a second time, whether it's the behavior module or the technical module, whatever, like never hurts because that's just how we learn. Sometimes like the first pass to it, we're not going to pick up on every single thing that was said, right? Mm -hmm. Second time around, usually you're going to pick up, you're going to pick up on certain things that you missed the first time. You're like, because now you're, more knowledgeable about the things that you're um, that, that that you're that you're reviewing, and so you're not having to think as hard just to like absorb the information this time, which is what's allowing you, it's freeing up mental bandwidth to pick up on maybe things that you would have missed otherwise the first time, you know. Right. Yeah. So if you have time, yeah, then by all means, like go through it again, like and even your behavioral answers, like. You, you can continue to, we can continue to tweak them and continue. To yeah. yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think there's that. Um, yeah, no, I've definitely gone through the technical modules about three times now. And it's it's sticking more and more every single time. But it's it's very cool to like see how it makes more sense every time, I guess, from the beginning of it. Um, and it's really like you just feel so much more secure with what you're doing. I'm just yeah, what I'm yeah, eventually I, I'd like to eventually, of course, like I'm going to note all the notes down and just kind of go through a few of the questions that I have on the technicals maybe next week um, and just ask you more specific questions. But it's making a lot more sense. So it just that just feels great. Yeah, yeah. Um, whatever questions you have, like, yeah, feel free to ask, and um, just make sure you really fully understand everything. You know? I mean, your your interviews haven't really been that technical so far, though, right? No, which is what I was thinking because it was the sophomore one. I really think possibly they just really don't expect you to know many technicals. Yeah, most sophomore internships are, are more behavioral in nature. Yeah. But you know, it'll be good for your junior summer internship. Um, processes so yeah okay um anything else i think this week it's that um thank you for all the feedback that helped a lot okay um, yeah cool all right uh well if there's something else then um uh, you know keep submitting those applications and then just i mean keep doing what you've been doing and you know i think we've identified 
like the lessons from his most recent interview. So that's good. And uh, we'll just keep grinding. All right. It's just like, even when, even when we fail or have a setback, like as long as we're failing, falling forward, then I think it's, we're getting one step closer to the goal. Right. So yeah. um, still a win regardless. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Thank you so much, Sam. All right. Well, if you need anything, just uh, message me on Slack. Okay. All Thank right. you. Talk soon. Bye. Bye. Thank you for tuning in. If you enjoy the content, please subscribe to our channel or podcast so that you can get notified of all of our future episodes as well. If you'd like to apply to work with us so that we can help you in a similar way, feel free to reach out to our team at www.wallstreetmastermind.com slash apply. The street is abbreviated to ST, so it's wallstmastermind.com slash apply. Talk soon.